Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a really simple, really clean animated overlay for your Twitch stream. A couple months back I did a complete redesign of my own Twitch stream and one of the things that I implemented were these really clean, really nice borders that just animate. They have these two-tone colors that just rotate around my camera. One of the things that bothers me about a lot of people's overlays is that they're just way over designed. So I just wanted to do something that's really minimal and something that's just not distracting. Now, yes, there are plenty of videos showing you how to do this kind of overlay from people that are way more talented, way more artistic, way more creative, and just, just overall way better people than me. But pretty much every tutorial that I looked up always uses paid software like Adobe After Effects or Apple Motion. And I'm guessing you don't know how to use either of those programs or you don't want to pay for them because they're really expensive, especially when you consider that you can just pay an artist to go make the overlay for you. So with that being said, we are going to be making these overlays without using any paid software, only stuff that you can get for free. And I'm not talking about like some BS trial software that like asks you to put in your credit card information and then like they start emailing you a bunch of stuff you don't care about and then they steal your information then they send it to the government then the government goes to your house and like fbi open up and you're just like please i just wanted to make us all animated overlays also i know some of you guys are super duper lazy like me and don't worry that's fine so because i'm such a saint i'm gonna leave a timestamp to the end of the video where i can show you where you can just download these overlays for free but for those of you who want to give me that sweet sweet ad revenue let's get right into the video What's up guys, it's Nighty. Before we get started, if you guys are interested in more videos on setting up your own Twitch stream from making your stream look pretty, camera stuff, microphones, whatever, make sure to do all the YouTube subscribe thingies. Uh, anyway, let's talk about setting up this overlay. Let's break it down. We're gonna be making this simple animated border that just has this two-tone gradient that just rotates around the camera and just loops over and over and over again. Here are the steps to making this. And trust me, when you find out how to make this, you're just gonna be like, like, it's really easy to do. So the first step is just to create a normal, simple rectangle. And then we're gonna add a gradient to that rectangle using any colors of your choice. So for me, I went with like a purple and blue theme for mine because that matches my branding. Then we're gonna take that rectangle and we're just gonna rotate it using some motion graphic software. And we're gonna take that rotating rectangle and then basically just cut out the shape of our camera border, kind of like a cookie cutter. And that's basically it. It's really, really simple, but in my opinion, it looks really dope. Now the shape of this border could be literally anything that you want it to be. It could be like a square, it could be a circle, it could be a star shape. You can do whatever you want with it. So we're gonna need two things. The first is some kind of image editing software, preferably something that is vector-based. So similar to Adobe Illustrator, but we're gonna be using something free called Inkscape. And the second thing we're gonna need is some kind of software to do the actual animation. So we're gonna be using HitFilm Express because it's completely free, it's pretty easy to use, and I get to be honest, it's like the only one that I actually know how to use. You'd probably also do this in DaVinci Resolve. Actually, I know you can do it in DaVinci Resolve. So if you use that, you can try that too. It's gonna be the exact same concept. For this video, I'm gonna assume that you have some basic knowledge of how timelines work in video editing software and what keyframes are. If you have no idea what keyframes are, that's okay. You might still be able to follow along with this video. If you're following along with this video and it starts to get too confusing, I have another video that kind of explains what keyframes are as well, where I just made like a really, really simple stinger transition in HitFilm. So if you get confused, go watch that video. So go out and install both of those programs, Inkscape, HitFilm Express. I've left a link in the description box down below where you can get both of those programs. So we're gonna jump over to our PC. I'm already at my PC, but we're gonna jump over to our PC and we're gonna do the first step, which is creating the shape of our border. God damn, that is bright. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a screenshot of our game and paste it into Inkscape. And the reason why we're gonna do that is we wanna get a rough idea of where we're gonna position our camera and how big the border needs to be. So for me, I've already done that. I'm just gonna go paste in my screenshot here. And this is where I have my camera set up. And then we're also gonna resize this page so that it fits the exact size of our image. So the quick way to do that is to just select your screenshot, go into file, and then go into document properties. And then in document properties, you wanna scroll down to resize page content and then 
you want to click this button that says resize page to drawing or selection and basically all that does is it just resize the page so now the page is exactly the same size as our screenshot now we're just going to take this line tool and we're just going to start drawing the shape of our border and the border can be any shape that you want so we're just going to be creative just make something so i'm going to fast forward this bit i'm just going to create a shape and i'll see you guys in about well like a second for you guys so here's the shape i went with i didn't do anything too crazy i just made it a regular rectangle but then i like cut off the corners to make it just a little bit more interesting and edgy we're actually going to change the color of the border to red you're going to see why in a second so we're going to go to stroke here and we're just going to change the color to red this part's important now if you're going for an irregular shape for your webcam that isn't just a simple rectangle you're also going to need to create a mask if you're going for a rectangle you don't need to do this step but if you're going to make an irregular shape like the one we're doing, you're going to create a mask. And all a mask does is it's just going to cut out the shape of your camera. And I'll show you how to apply that in OBS later. So to create the mask, we're going to do exactly the same thing like that we did with our border. We're just going to select the line tool and then we're going to create the shape. And then we'll have hopefully just a solid block and that will be our mask. And this is what our mask looks like. So we'll just delete this background here just so you can see what's going on. So we got the shape of our border and then we got the mask inside. I left a little bit of, of a gap between our outline and our mask just because I think that looks cooler, but you can do whatever you want. You can make it fit exactly up to you. Now, all that's left to do is to export both the mask and the outline as two separate PNG files. And before we export this, I'm actually going to resize this page because we don't need this entire page to be exported. So we're going to just resize it the exact same way that we did before. So we're just going to select our outline and our mask and then go document properties and click resize page to drawing or selection and you'll see that the numbers change here i'm actually going to make the page just a little bit bigger just to leave a bit of a gap around the border just to give us a little bit of space pretty much just resize the page so we'll start by exporting the outline and then we'll do the mask so we'll delete the mask temporarily and then hit Control shift e Control shift e to go export and then just select page as the export area and just save it as I'm just going to call it outline and then hit enter. And then we're going to bring our mask back and just do exactly the same thing. So we're just going to get rid of our outline and then export the page and we're just going to call it mask and hit enter again. So our final result should look like this. We should have one file, which is our mask looks like this. And then the other one is our outline. Now that we've got that, next step we're gonna move on to is animating the border. So since we're animating in HitFilm Express, we're gonna open it up, go into new, and then we're gonna set our resolution and our frame rate. The resolution doesn't matter. You'll see why in a little bit, but the frame rate kind of does matter. If you use a higher frame rate, like 60 FPS, you're gonna use a lot more of your GPU. So if your GPU isn't that great, you might want to use 30 FPS. 30 FPS for what we're going to be doing is going to be just fine. But for me, I'm just going to set mine to 60 FPS. Okay. Uh, and then set our duration to, I don't know, we'll just set it to maybe 10 seconds. So when your project is opened up, you want to go and get your outline that you created, drag that into your media pool and then drag your outline onto your timeline. On your timeline, you want to right click on the outline and you're going to create a composite shot. And basically a composite shot, it's just like, it basically turns the image into its own self-contained entity that you can layer different objects onto and animate. So that's what we want to do. So we're going to make a composite shot. Now on top of this outline, we're going to create that initial rectangle that we're eventually going to rotate. So to do that, we're going to go into new layer and then add a plane. And then we're going to size the plane uh, big enough so that when you rotate it, it covers all edges of this outline. So I'm just going to do like a complete guess and just say, I don't know, like 512 by 512 should cover cover about all okay i did the math and that's exactly the right number so now over in the viewer you'll notice we got this big white rectangle that if we just moved around it's covering our outline and that's exactly what we want you want to make sure it covers everything so that it doesn't cut any of the corners off if you make your rectangle too slow it's going to cut out some of the corners and it's just not going to look right then the next step is we're going to add our gradient to our rectangle so we're going to expand go into effects we're going to go to gradients and fills and then go to color gradient nice found it first try like instantly so you'll see we have our color gradient now we're going to change the blend 
to normal. So it just creates a normal gradient. So we've got that gray to white gradient. We're gonna change the colors to whatever colors we want. So I'm gonna start, change this to a nice purple. Let's make it a nice Twitch purple here. And then we're gonna change the end color to a nice, let's just say, you know what? We're just gonna leave it white. The effect we want is basically to have this rectangle rotate around like this. The way we're gonna accomplish this is by keyframing the rotation of the plane. So we go down to transform and then select rotation and then click on this circle here that's gonna enable keyframes for the rotation. You'll notice that it added a diamond right here and that diamond just denotes the first keyframe. And what we want is by the end of the animation, it would have done a full rotation. So we're gonna move our playhead all the way to the end. And then we're, we're gonna increase this number here by one. And basically all that does is it tells HitFilm by the end of the animation, do a full rotation. And then if we scroll the playhead along, you see our rectangles moving on its own. Okay, so I think the animation is a little too fast. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go to the editor, right click in the composite shot, and then we're gonna change the duration to let's just make it five seconds. So it's gonna be uh, half as fast as it was before. So we go back to the composite shot and we wanna make sure that we just extend everything to the end and move this keyframe to the end and make sure our plane extends all the way to the end of the animation. And if we go back and play this again, I think that looks a lot better. And then finally, last step, we're gonna cut out the shape of our border. So how do we do that? We're gonna go into keying and then we're gonna go to matte enhancement and then add set matte. I totally didn't look that up just then. You're gonna wanna go and expand this set matte effect. And then your source layer is gonna be that initial outline that we added to our timeline. So if we click on it and we see this outline.png, that's the outline that we made. So we're gonna select that and it just automatically just cuts out of our shape. But if you go back full quality and play it again, there we go. We got our full animation now. So our animation is fully done. All that's left to do now is to export it. And in Hit Film Express, that's kind of tricky. And the reason why it's tricky is because we want to be able to export, but with a transparent layer in our final video file. The problem with Hit Film Express is while it can do that, it does it uncompressed, so the file sizes are just massive. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna export it uncompressed in Hit Film Express, but then we're gonna use a converter to transform it into a smaller WebM file that's just tiny and much better to work with. So back in HitFilm, we're just gonna right click on our composite shot, go into export, export contents, and then we're gonna select here, uncompressed AVI with alpha. And that alpha is our alpha transparency layer. So we're just gonna output this and we're just gonna call it border and then start exporting. Okay, our export is done. So we're gonna open up the file and we're gonna right click it and if we go into properties notice how like this is only like a really really simple really basic animation that's five seconds long and it's 130 megabytes if you have something that's even a little bit more complicated this could be like multiple gigabytes and it, it's insane so we want to compress this down into a smaller file. And the way that we're going to compress it is using a script that I actually wrote myself. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for where you can go to download that. It'll be in my Discord. So I'll upload the converter script that I wrote. So just download that. I'll put all the instructions for how to do it. But basically what you want to do is just take your big AVI file and then drag it onto the script and then we'll start re-encoding that giant file and make it into a much smaller WebM animation. Okay, your script is done. So I'm gonna go into our process folder and we'll have this new border.webm animation and we're just gonna open it up. And this is our final result. So all that's left to do is we're gonna add this into OBS. But before we do that, for the people who didn't watch the entire video that I worked really, really hard on, you can download the designs that I've created. Just go into the link in the description that will link you to the Discord. And inside the Discord, there's gonna be a text channel called Design Files. And inside that channel, there'll be three designs. So the first design is just like a normal rectangle with four different colors. 
The second is a sort of, it's still a rectangle, but with the corners cut out and that also has four colors as well. And then the third design is gonna be a circle. So it's an animated circle, again, four different colors. Just go in, pick the design that you want and you're gonna want two files. One is gonna be a WebM animation. The second is gonna be a mask. That's what we're gonna be working with, okay? Cool. So we're all on the same page now, whether you watch the video or not. Now you can open up OBS, go into your camera, the filters, and then add a filter called image mask blend. You're going to change the type to alpha and then select the mask file you either created or the one that you downloaded from the discord. Essentially, all this does is it just cuts out a shape for your camera. So if you're using just a normal rectangle, you don't have to do this step so you can skip it. But if you're using any of the other shapes, you're going to have to add one of these masks and then you're going to create a new media source. So right click, add media source, and then you're going to select the WebM animation again that you either created yourself or downloaded from the discord. Just make sure to check loop so that the animation loops when it finishes and doesn't just stop at the end of the five seconds. Press OK and then you'll see your animation appear on your canvas and then just position your camera so that it goes inside of your border. And that's basically it. Put your border in your camera wherever you want in your scene and you're done. So there you go. Here's your final result, but feel free to experiment. HitFilm Express is really powerful. And if you want to go all out and make a really advanced overlay, you can do that in HitFilm Express. The point of this video was not to show you how to make this specific design, but really just to point out that HitFilm Express exists and you can use it to make overlays because I haven't really seen anyone do that before. So do your own research, practice using HitFilm Express and make something really, really creative. And if you do make something of your own, feel free to share it with the rest of the community in the Discord. There's a channel there called Stream Designs where you can post all of your layout designs and overlays. A lot of people have been doing that lately and it's been really awesome to see what kind of things you guys can come up with. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Also, you can catch me on my Twitch streams. I stream four nights a week where we do a lot of just chatting and you guys can ask me literally any question related to streaming. We spent a lot of time talking about that. Other than that, you guys have been awesome and I will catch you guys in the next video.